Hi everyone and welcome to another recipe video. And today I'm making this as good as it looks creme brulee French toast. Isn't it gorgeous? And really simple to make too. Please excuse the state of my nails. I always use a peel off base coat whenever I paint them and as you can see a few already popped off. They usually last me about a week though. Anyway, here I've got a really buttery loaf of brioche, which I just bought. And yes, this recipe does work with regular sandwich bread, but I really would recommend brioche because it's already enriched with so much butter in the dough and it just makes it that bit richer. And do get an unsliced loaf because we want to slice it ourselves into nice big thick slices. So what we're going to do first is we're going to trim off the end because that will expose the spongy inside and make it easier to soak up all that custard. And uh, I just put this in the toaster and had it as a snack later. So don't throw that away, it's still good. Now we're going to need two thick slices of this brioche. And as you can see, it's basically like a doorstep size. Just the right size. We're going to need two of these, so do that again. And this is optional, but I actually left these slices of bread out overnight to dry a bit because it makes it easier for it to soak up the custard, but you don't have to do that. I'm just setting the rest of this loaf aside because that'll be tomorrow's breakfast. Now I'm preparing the custard and it's really simple, you're just going to need two eggs and then add some milk in. So I'm cracking two eggs into the dish that I plan on soaking the bread in, but you can do this in a small bowl first and then pour it in later, but I just wanted to minimise washing up. So I'm breaking the eggs here and giving them a good old whisk, and then to that I'm going to add, and this is going to be full fat milk, 150 millilitres of milk. Again, you can use any milk here, but full fat is the best for the richest possible outcome. Now we're just going to stick those two massive slices of bread right in there, give them a bit of a turn so both sides get a good coating, and we're just going to set those aside for about 5-10 to 10 minutes while we carry on with the rest of the recipe. And remember to give them a good old flip over halfway through. Uh, of course I dropped the fork right in there, <laughs> which was not what I wanted, never mind. Now we're going to make the creamy custard topping. And this uses egg yolks only, so using two egg yolks here, and if you want some recipes for the remaining egg whites, don't throw them away. Follow the link that I'm going to link in the video up here and down below for some egg white only recipes on my YouTube page. So make sure you're putting the egg yolks into a heat proof bowl here, because now we're going to set it on top of a pan of simmering water and add two teaspoonfuls of caster sugar and give that a good whisk. Make sure the bottom of the bowl doesn't touch the water because we don't want it too hot. And what we're going to do is we're going to whisk, whisk, whisk until it's really, really foamy and voluminous and pale and fluffy. And this is basically going to be our custard. Again, make sure the heat's not too high because you don't want to scramble your egg yolks at this point. Once it's fluffy, I'm just adding one tablespoonful of single cream, not double because I didn't want it to curdle or over whip, so single is fine, and then half a teaspoonful of vanilla bean paste. If you can't find this, then vanilla extract works as well. Give it another good whisk until well combined and thick. And this is also how you make the dessert sabayon, which instead of cream, you add a bit of masala wine to it. So if you want to change it up one day, you can and add wine instead of cream. Now we're ready to cook our toast. So I'm taking my wok here and I'm going to oil it lightly. And unfortunately, I made the mistake of using vinegar to clean the wok last, so it actually lost a bit of the nice seasoning it had, so it's not as non-stick as it usually is. Don't worry, I did re-season the pan after this. But uh, yeah, it did cause a bit of sticking. So I'm heating the pan on a medium heat and I've put my well-soaked brioches in and I'm actually going to cover it to help it steam. And after a couple of minutes we're going to flip them. And you'll see the trials and tribulations of a pan that is no longer non-stick. <laughs> this was really frustrating. But thankfully we're going to cover it with more custard and then take a blade torch to it so it's going to hide any of those imperfections. Do a good flip, flip the other one. And I'm just going to cover it for a couple more minutes to make sure it's well cooked all the way through. And because I was impatient, I did give them another little flip in another few minutes too. These are really, really thick, so you don't want a cold middle, especially dealing with raw unpasteurized eggs. If your eggs happen to be pasteurized, then great, go ahead, but you may not like the jelly-like consistency of uncooked eggs, so do make sure they're nice and cooked. Give them a little flip. You don't be tempted to turn the heat up because we don't want to burn the toasts. Alright, these are just about done, so let's plate them up and assemble them. This is where a kitchen blade torch is really handy, but if you don't have one then at this point preheat your grill so you can caramelise the sugar in a minute. 
And now, oh, it's so difficult for me not to just eat this straight out of the bowl with a spoon. But I'm going to restrain myself and I'm going to spread it evenly over the top of the two toasts. And this is the perfect amount to serve too. Spread it nice and evenly so both people get even amounts of custard. And then for some reason my camera just stopped. So here, just pretend I'm sprinkling one teaspoonful of caster sugar over each in real time. There we go. <laughs> and now all that's left to do is torch it. And then that's it, you're pretty much done. Just give it a few seconds slash a minute to cool down before you put it straight in your mouth because you don't want to burn yourself with hot caramel. And again, if you don't have a blowtorch, just whack it under a hot grill. And pretty much as soon as the caramel forms and cools, it forms a lovely crackly hard shell that's really satisfying to crack into with a spoon. I swear, once you get used to caramelising sugar, you're going to want to brulee everything. It's so much fun. Anyway, take a listen to how crackly the caramel gets. Utter brunch perfection. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you'll join me next Wednesday for my next one. Get the full recipe on my blog tashcakes.com and find me on Instagram as Tashcakes Tastes. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to see more. Give this video a like if you liked it to help other people find it. Comment down below if you'd like me to make anything in particular and I'll see you guys later. Be good, be nice and have a good week.